Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and today we're going to address these. Now, I don't regard myself as a card maker. I assemble cards from bits of ephemera that I have made for other things, like this could be a journal front and I've turned it into a card. So I don't categorise myself as a card maker, although loads of people say, well, you're making a card, you're a card maker. Mm -hmm. There's there's something about lick and sticking a card and there's something about being creative with folds and gate folds and dead folds and waterfall cards and blah, blah. This, this is just what I do. I love making these. I don't send cards out except when I send out for a swap or I send someone happy mail. So these are always little bits of my art and before they go out, I do stamp that they're made from me. So these were the last three I made. And I thought, right, there's so many questions about how are they, what are they, how have you done them, how they look like that. I'm just going to recreate these three cards. Now, I'm not going to be able to recreate them perfectly because I don't have all of the exact stuff again. Um, I might just be able to do this one again perfectly. But anyway, that's not the point. All they are is I make these toppers and then I stick them onto blank cards. And I buy the blank cards on the internet. I buy them in bundles. They come with matching envelopes. And then when it comes to sign time to send them out, I'll either get onto my computer and I'll print off a piece of paper that I fold and stick in here with what I want to say and sign it because my handwriting is horrible. Or I will handwrite a little message just as neatly as I can. And there are many out there who will contact me and go, Kerry, what does this say? And sent me a photograph of my own handwriting. So I'm never insulted by that. So we're going to be addressing these and I'm going to make them accept. Because I've already got three in craft card, I'm going to do three in white. So the base for each of these is a book page. And I like to choose a light coloured book page. So one that's quite light. Um, in colour, not aged, not coffeed, um, that is quite a light coloured book page. You can see I've got napkins here because that's where the images come from. Now I don't cut these down to any set size at the beginning. Okay, um, they are going to be backed, the images, onto um, a layer of cardstock and I will give you me measurements as I go along. The measurements for the card blanks I use are 5 inches by 7 inches. Things to remember when using book pages. Always have a quick glance over the book page so there's nothing untoward on them. I usually go for things like gardening books or things like that that have, there's no way there's going to be swearing, bad words, offensive, religious, anything in here, racist, homophobic, nothing's likely to be in a gardening book. So I tend to, and I've got this one book that I tend to use these for, um, I try not to have too many titles in them. Um, and I try not to have that, so I always make sure it's a full page. So, preparing my napkins. Right, this one's already done. As you can see, it's quite slim and transparent. When you get a napkin, you're going to find that... Um, oh, that one's already done as well. Um, that there's actually um, layers to it. Now, a lot of napkins will have two layers and then the image layer. Some napkins, some less expensive ones, however, will actually have one layer and the image layer. So now a couple of ways of doing this. I sometimes just wet my fingers and I pinch. And as I pull them apart, you'll see they pull the layers apart. If that's not working for you, if you get some sticky tape or I've got some, I've got some washi tape here. It should work with washi tape. Um, if you press that down onto the back and pull, it'll tear off the first layer. Press it down again and pull, it'll tear the second layer. So you're looking to remove everything except the layer. And you will know you're at the right layer because as you can see, you can see the image through, through the thin um, napkin front. Now I have lots and lots and lots of napkins. Um, I love using napkins, so I use them for lots of things. Now, I'm not particularly cutting these down to any size. This one I pulled out the two pieces because I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted to use. But looking at this book here, I think that will work. So let's put this one back in the drawer because that's the only bit I've got left of that one. 
Now, as I said, I'm going to keep this really simple because I don't have time for making loads of cards. When I make them, I want them to be simple. Now, I would say remember this writing panel here. Okay, so measurements for my card. This is a five by seven card. So the smallest image is about four inches. So if I look at this, I try to make sure that's at least four inches, the written area, and it's at least six, six and a half on here. So I know that I've got enough area to actually glue on and I'm trimming them afterwards anyway. I'm using just a regular Pritt stick. It's my glue stick of choice. And then there's one more element you need to bring in, and that is, um, I call it cling film. Some people call it plastic wrap. Some people in the States will call it Saram wrap. Um, I like to get a piece for each of the cards I'm making, because if, if you're using um, plastic wrap or cling film, that's been used for another card, sometimes you'll find it will stick um, to the card itself. I'm just gonna put a bit of paper back there just, just in case I go off the edges here. Now, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put a generous layer on here. I know I don't have to go all the way to the edge of the book page, but I am going to go as far as I can over the text. And I'll try not to have lumps in here but I also want to make sure that I fully covered the book page. So if I pick this up and move it in the light, not sure you'll see it, but I can see it. There's a sheen all the way across this, which means that I haven't missed any areas. Take this out the way because that could have glue on it. Then I'm going to come in with my image and I'm going to use the lines as my horizontal. I'm just going to pop this down onto it. Now, as it's not a wet glue, I can come up and work the odd crease out from down the edges there. However, if there's creases on this in the eventual thing, I don't mind because it's a napkin. I then put my plastic wrap or ceram wrap over the top. The layers I took off, I'm now going to use to press down on the plastic. And what this will do is it will burnish the napkin into the book surface. Now, I'm being respectful, I'm not pummeling the heck out of it, but I am definitely, definitely rubbing it flat. This works any air bubbles out, and it usually gets rid of any pattern. Um, don't over pummel it, because you could, and by pummeling I mean really press hard on it, because you could still tear it. Now, because the napkin surface is what I call a semi-permeable skin in that stuff will come through. You're going to find part of the glue may have come through. So gently peel back the plastic wrap. Get rid of this. Um, it's probably got a very fine layer of glue on it. Get rid of it now. It's cheap as chips, don't bother. As you can see now, there are no air bubbles. It's all nicely pressed down and my image is set. So I need to do that for all three of these images. So bear with me, that's what we're doing in this tutorial. Um, feel free to fast forward to um, a section where you see that I'm no longer gluing down, but I like to keep things in real time so you actually get an idea of how long the whole process would take. Um, these, as I said, I will use this process for doing journal cards. I will do it for um, the toppers for journal covers. I will do this on tags. I mean, it's, it's my go-to process for putting napkins down. Now this one that's really, really faint, it's going to be overlaid by another piece of ephemera later on. So just pop that down and press it down. Now this is also a process that I use for rice paper if I'm, if I'm worried that I'm going to damage the rice paper. Okay, so sometimes you'll come in and you'll go, oh, I'll just run over that with a credit card or a store card. And sometimes because rice paper can have a bit of a texture to it with the fibers, sometimes you'll tear it. But as you can see, I'm just rubbing this on and then just gently peel this away and you get an absolutely flawless 
covering with the napkin. I can still read through it. It's burnished in. It's not a wet glue, so it's not going to um, pucker up on you either. It's just going to be done. It will curl slightly, or some of them curl slightly, not all of them. Some of them will curl slightly because of the wetness of the glue stick. That never bothers me. Um, because I know one of the next stages is actually to stick that to another another piece of card which will then be stronger. Right, on to the last one. Mr Duck here. This is also what I call quite a clean process in that um, you can do this in a small area, you could do this at a dining room table while you're watching the kids do another another thing because it's not sticky as in a wet glue, it's not going to transfer around your space, it is literally a glue stick. Right, this is a shorter image so I'm going to put him on and I'm going to leave the blue on the bottom but I'm not, not particularly bothered whether I use um, the blue at the bottom but I like to show you that not all images need to fit the height of the backing card so if we look at the one I did see I cut this a lot shorter so it's more of a gap than the quarter of inch and also I only made it narrow just to focus on the duck itself or the mat is it a mandarin? Man mandarin duck? no it's not a mandarin duck I know what this duck is and I can't remember what it is so, right, so he is on there now. So that's pretty much um, the majority of the gluing done. A lot of the time I will um, use double-sided tape when it comes to layering the card itself, but I will always use glue stick when it comes to a book page. Next bit for me now is get my guillotine. Um, I like to use a guillotine for this process if the glue is still wet, which these are still wet. So what I would say is make sure that you dry them totally if, you, if you're concerned, do you know what I mean? Because if it's wet and you're using a um, trimmer, it could easily just slice its way through it. Right, I'm going to come in, I'm going to use the edge of the book page, which I can see, and I'm going to line that up on the horizontal and I'm lining up and down the edge of the top edge of my text. Okay, I've done it that way so I've got a straight edge to work from before I do anything else whatsoever. I'm going to come in, I'm going to trim down the side now. I want to know where the text starts, so actually let me just double check something for a second. Where's that ruler gone? So this was four inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that four inches here I can still see the text and I'm going to come in, chop that down, come in again. Now this this measurement here for me was six inches so I'm going to come in with six inches here. Um, if you want a specific part of your image of course um, you need to focus on that one. So. So that has given me a 6x4 image, which is exactly the same size as this one. Okay, that's the first image done. Now, you will have cut off pieces. It'll depend on how large your book page was. You might be able to rescue this. Like, if this was a book, bigger book page, maybe that bit was on a wider piece. You could turn it into a tag or something. For me, these are just going in the bin. Right, I'm going to do the same thing on here. Exactly, so lots of repeat processes here, guys. So I come in, I'm checking that that's four inches. I want to see where it falls on my image. And they're going to come in. Now, I'm actually going to change this slightly because, as you can see, my image is here. I quite like this part. So I want to try and not try. I'm going to take it off so I save that which means I'll have to sacrifice a bit more up there but I'm just going to cut this off here 
And then I'm going to come back in here to make this six inches. So basically four by six, which to be honest, if I'm doing um, handmade postcards, four by six is pretty much the measurements I use for a postcard. So I could have made these into postcards as well. So that's the second one done. Get the scraps out of the way. Now, <clears throat> my duck friend here. Now I did this one by eye, but I will give you measurements on this. So I'm just So I'm just going to come in, I'm going to cut it off where that blue line is. Now, this is just the way I did it, guys. It's, it's purely up to you, the decisions you make. I'm going to come in and take it down the side. Now, I'm not going to do six inches on this one. I'm going to come just above his head. Why does that look straight? That doesn't look straight to me. Let's chop it from this side where I've got a straight edge to work from. Sorry, I think I think I was talking and not thinking or working. Yeah, that doesn't look straight to me. Right, so back to where I was. Um, I'm going to cut it just above his head, pretty much by there. Now I'm struggling slightly because I would normally let these images dry but because because I'm doing it for the video I'm working these are still gluey okay so I come in I'm sort of kind of centralizing the duck in this instance yeah I'm, mm, think about that he looks okay he still doesn't look straight sorry I'm a bit picky about things like that I sometimes have trouble with, well, the reason I use a guillotine is because for some reason I can never cut a straight line on a trimmer. Um, and that's just, that's, that's user error. That's not the trimmer normally. It's normally just me. But I need things to be straight or my OCD will actually kick in in a big way. And I'll never be happy. Right, come on, get unstuck from there. Okay, that looks straight to me. So as you can see, I've chopped him down to roughly, actually that's pretty much the same size, isn't it? That's good. So roughly the same size. So now I'm done with the trimmer because I've already cut the next bits. Now, the duck is gonna go onto this color as it was in the original. The flowers are gonna go onto this one as they were in the original. And then the sunflowers are going to go onto the purple because that's as we were in the original. The reason I chose this color, by the way, is um, purple is a complementary to yellow. This one, I just chose this because it was a muted color and I wanted to keep it delicate pink. This one I chose because I wanted to pull the color of the duck's head outwards. So now I'm going to do is get rid of this for a start. Right, all of these panels have been cut the same size. Okay, they're all cut to four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And if I've done my math correct, that means that each of these will now sit with approximately a quarter inch margin all around each of them, with the exception of Mr. Duck. Okay, so that's where the thing is going. Now, um, you could use double-sided tape to do this next bit. I choose not to because I'm not the greatest at centralizing images on layers. So I like to use glue stick again because I know I'm going to have a bit of wiggle time. The glue stick will give me a little bit of time to move things around so that they're not, they're not stuck to it. So where I would use art glitter glue for some things, for this I don't. So I'm just going to pop that on there. Make sure my fingers are clean. Now I'm going to lift this up to look look at it straight ahead so I can see if it's... Oh God, that's pretty much exactly right. Right, now, at this point, you can use a smoother. I'm not burnishing this. I'm literally just running over the top. If I'm working without the camera around, I usually get an old brayer that I've got and I press it down with the brayer. I use a brayer to press stuff down a lot 
when I'm gluing them, but that's just an unnecessary stage. You could use something like this. You could even use your hand to do it if you wish. So I need to repeat that on this one. Now, obviously the measurements will change depending on the measurements of your cards. Um, you can get blank cards really inexpensively on the internet. I know that when I go to craft shows and craft fairs, buying blank card stock is usually one of the cheapest things at the show because the traders have bought it there in bulk and what they're trying to do is they're trying to just clear their stocks or clear their warehouses. I'm doing well today. You know, a bit of a smooth jam, bit of a smooth jam. Where's my little roller? So that's number two. Now these will begin to curl, but the next stage is going to stick them down anyway. I wouldn't worry about that. Now, Mr. Duck is a slightly different kettle of fish because obviously I'm putting him to one side. So my thing is to think about the distance there and there and there and leave this bit. It doesn't matter what the distance is there. I have a plan for that. Um, you may also see that I'm gluing on magazine pages. That's because I do a lot of glue booking and collage work and I harvest images from magazines. Well, instead of spare, uh, throwing the spare pages into the recycle bin immediately, I use them for glue pages a lot of the time. If I've got glue pages, I use old book pages. So, I tell you what, the lining up gods are with me today. This never happens. You watch the next bit, it's going to go all wrong on me. So, so now that I've got everything in place, I work directly now on getting them onto the card toppers, with the exception of one thing, which was Mr. Duck. Okay, but actually, no, I did do it. Okay, ignore that, scrub that. Um, we're going to now put these onto our card blanks. So I've got five by seven card blanks, as you can see. They will fit perfectly on there. And all I've done is whatever size you're using of card, I like to have a quarter inch. So that's a quarter inch, that's a quarter inch. For me, it's just a neat way of doing it. As I said, I'm not a card maker. It's just a formula that I found works for me. So this bit I usually use double-sided tape for. So this is what's called finger lift tape. So there's actually an edge on it. So I'm going to turn my image over, I'm going to pop double sided tape, it tears really easily this version, I mean you could do this with a, a tape runner as well if you've got one, I don't have a tape runner, I don't get on with them, um, for me they, they add more frustration to my life than actually helping so I tend not to use them. I did that fold over. So I've cut that a little bit off. I've got something stuck to the underneath it and I don't want that. Now, um, when it comes to the center, I'll just put a daub of glue in the center if I really, really feel I need to. But my method for doing this now is I come in, I will lift up a little bit of the tape and I will fold it so it's sticking to the outside. So you can see it's on the outside. Again, and whether this is finger lift tape or actually just double sided tape, I will do that and make sure that the start of it is on the outside. This will help when it comes to sticking things down because the tape ends that I'm going to peel off will hover just above the surface. I'm going to come in, just going to put a stripe of glue down the middle. Important, make sure your card opens in the right orientation before you do the next bit. So I'm going to sit this on here and as you can see, because those little flaps of the tape are there, it means that I can move this around without things engaging and sticking down. So once I've got that lined up, I'm going to press down in the middle and then I'm gently going to pull away the pieces of tape. And what that does is it exposes the double sided tape underneath so it's sticking down. This is a trick I learned off working on shopping channel TVs with card makers. Um, and it's a quick and easy way to do it because it's already stuck down now. So I now need to do that for the other two and then we'll get on to the decorating. 
which as I'm duplicating a design, it means I don't have to think too hard, to be honest with you, because the design is already thought out. I made them already, so I'm just literally, I've already got the pieces pulled out. I can talk about them, stick them down at the same time. There you go. Did I get purple under there? A little bit of purple under there. Okay, so again, doing what I did before, I'm using a pokey tool or an AWL all just to lift this off because I don't have fingernails. I cut my fingernails regularly and therefore I don't have nails that I can stick underneath. And I found with double sided tape, one of these pokey tools is the best way to go. Funny enough, I can't seem to get it to work when I'm lifting the backs off labels though. It's weird. We all have our little foibles and I think that's one of my labels and my nemesis. I have tried so many different versions. Right, orientation is correct. A little bit of glue in the middle of there. That's only there just to hold it flat in case it's, it decides to bow at some point. I'm going to central this. Remember I can move it around because I've got those bits of tape sticking up. Press it down in the middle which holds it in place. I'm just running the pad of my thumb down afterwards just to make sure it's in contact. And that's the second one done. One more, hopefully not boring. I'm trying to keep this to be a really quick video. I should imagine it's probably going to be about a 45 minute video. Um, we'll see. Now, um, I'm using here, I'm using napkins. You could use tissue paper, you could use rice paper, you could use a, um, what am I trying to say, a digital image, you could use anything. This just happens to be the way I do it because I have a large collection of napkins because I love them. And whenever I'm traveling, um, I always keep an eye out for napkins. Like I'm about to leave for Chicago, um, on a vacation and I'm off to another part of America and I'm going to Canada as well and I can assure you as I'm going along I will probably pop into places like Bed Bath & Beyond, Target, at, at, at any of the Krugers, wherever I am I always stick my head into um, the gift wrap aisle because they might have tissue paper that I really want um, and I always pop my head where the bath uh, the what am I try to say where things like napkins and tablecloths and that will be so I always keep my eye out because there are some incredibly beautiful designs out there and I like using them I'll pop that on there now if you don't have access to anything like that you can always do an internet search for napkins if you go on to Etsy Etsy sellers there will sell them um it depends on how many you're going to use because if you're buying them from Etsy they're probably going to sell you um, two of each napkin and it's going to cost you probably more for a pack of four than it would to cost you to buy an pa entire pack of 20 but if you don't have an option that's the way to go. Okay so we now have our card bases all done and dusted. So let's deal with Mr. Duck first. No let's deal with this one. Uh, Let's make up our mind with this. Let's deal with this one first. Right, so let's pull the original in. So the original was this. Now, I need a button cluster. So as you saw in the previous video, I made myself a little button cluster book. It was inspired by who, who started this. I think I was inspired by Gail Augustinelli. And she might have been inspired by Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah. Actually, that one will do. It's got yellow, yellow and purple. There you go. Um, so I'll link this video in, in the description box for you guys, just, just in case you want to see my video, which in turn links through to everyone else's video. Right, I'm just going to come in and I'm using a little bit of Fabri-Tac on the back because obviously it's fabric. I don't need to go all over it. I just need to stick it down. I try not to be too bulky with stuff because I know eventually it's going to need to go into an envelope. Even if I'm mailing it and not through the postal system, it's going into a box. Um, I still like to 
have it there so that it's not too bulky. Right, I have a little number. The little numbers were just stamped on scraps of paper. Actually, there's one right there. That's nice. I might, might just edge this up with a bit of vintage photo distress ink by Rangers just to frame it out. Not using a lot. I don't want this to look too antique-ish. I do want a little touch of something on the edge. Now, I am duplicating a design that I've done. There is no reason why, if you've got a pa packet of napkins and there's like 20 napkins in there, that you don't actually go through and make 20 identical cards from them. Because what are the chances of you sending the cards to exactly the same person? So if you're going to build up your stash, just get into a process of make, make, make. That's the way I do it. Right, everyone, uh, change one thing, everything changes. Right, I did have some of these. Right, these are just stamped on um, bits of spare. You know when you tear the edges off the books um, or edges off digitals or stuff? I will always keep those bits. That looks a bit light for there. It might be okay, but I'll just trim this down a bit. Don't mind finger tearing it. Nope, don't like that bit. I overdid it. Oh, there you go. That's a bit of work. Right, just go. Now, this is very fragile because it's really old book page, this one. But this would normally go into the trash or the bin because it was considered as waste. But um, I learned this trick from Gail Agostinelli. She has a basket where she just saves all of these trims and offcuts. And then she goes through and she literally stamps onto each one of them words, numbers, anything that she needs stamping to make extra pieces of ephemera. So, and that's how all of these were stamped onto edges of book pages. So, right, there you go. Card done, nice and easy, nice and quick. We'll take one final look at them later on before we finish. So, let's put my lids on things while we go to the next one, right, the next one. Where is that? Okay, so I managed to find some really big butterflies in a store here in the UK called The Works last year, and it was a one-off shipment they had in. So I'm just tidying up the edges here because I did ask whether they were expecting more stock, and they said no. So I bought all of the stock that they had on the shelf at the time, which unfortunately was only three packets of these giant butterflies, but I, I love them. They're not... I wouldn't normally use things with gold and that in them, but I absolutely love these. And some of the butterflies are really huge. So I'm hoping that in future, if they saw that they were actually popular, not through my, my buying them, but just being popular, that they might just one day restock them. Right, I'm just going to go around here just to take any white off the edges. They were already die cut for me when I bought them. But there's always a bit where the kiss cut just just misses the edge of the image. It's it's traditional. It happens. Right. So I need to cut the edge off here. Now I could go in with the scissors, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go in with the guillotine. I know with the scissors I can sometimes cut something slightly curving. So I'm just going to come in. I'm going to line the bottom of the butterfly up with my lines. Coming quite a far away. And chomp. Now, I haven't as yet found a use for this because this is cardstock, so I literally throw these away. Sorry if that offends anyone. It shouldn't do, but there is only so much I'm going to keep in my life. So, um, I'm using Art Litter Glue for this because this is cardstock. And it's slightly shiny. So I prefer it not, not to move around once it's in place. So I'm going to line this up with the edge of the napkin piece. Give it a good press down. And that's that image done. Loving that. Come on Griffiths, get the pin in the glue. There you go. So next bit for me is I'm going to look at the labels. Now I this was a Tracy Fox label, I believe. 
So where's Tracy Fox gone? So Tracy Fox has wonderful digitals on on her. Um, let's go with that one actually. First choice out it comes. Um, on her Etsy store. Her Etsy store is called Love Junk Journals. Um, she has a vast array of digital kits and she's got several digital kits of labels. Um, there's field note, there's miscellaneous notes, there's lots of them and I love them and I, I've been using them for years and I, if there's one thing I like from a digital with labels, I print them, I fussy cut them, I've got them forever and if I need to redo them I just fussy cut them again. So stick that in the top corner finish it off slight variation doesn't bother me now butterfly I know I had some of those because I actually stamped some yesterday is that a nice enough color mm, I'd like something a little darker sorry I'm looking over there don't know why I want something darker I just feel that <clears throat> is that that one. I think I want to use that one. I don't probably because that is also slightly, well it's not white is it? Come in just to catch the edges. This is a step you don't need to do. It's personal preference when it comes to that. And stick this down. It's all about layers when I do stuff and I really love having the layers. So I put the lid back on there. One more thing to do and that's that's the line I drew around it. So I need to get a pen. So this is a 0.8 Unipin fine liner. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a raggedy line around the edge of here. I'm trying not to be perfectly straight and that's on purpose because I wouldn't be able to draw it perfectly straight. But I like the way the wiggly line actually just frames it out and it looks lovely. And the other thing I like to do, I like to do what I call a faux knot. So I come down to the corner, I'll just do a bit of a squiggle. I'll do a bit of a squiggle as if the threads have been tied in the top and bottom corner. So again, that's the second one done. And on to Mr. Duck. Now, Mr. Duck is slightly different. Mr. Duck would be slightly different, wouldn't he? Um, he has got a piece of trim. So for this bit of trim down here, I actually have trims. Um, the trims I've made myself. And um, what I do is I tend to get strips of... Um, double-sided tape like this is Tim Holtz tissue paper and I'll stick it to it leaving the back on the double-sided tape and then this just gives me trims and I do this with this is like edges of cardstock I do it with napkins um, there you go there's a piece of napkin that was done napkin I also have um, my own trims as a digital so you could actually just print them and you don't even need to be double-sided taped you could just cut trim and actually just leave it leave it as is to be honest and just stick it down i i find that putting it onto double-sided tape is just easier for me right so i'm not sure i'm going to have exactly the same one that i had before so i'll have a little bit of a look through and see see what grabs me what do you fancy mr duck what do you want so oh i do have the same one okay not identical, but there you go. Right, this this was obviously on napkins, so this must have been a napkin I picked up somewhere. I'm horrible. Like if I go to a restaurant or I go to a cafe, it was another bit of it, and they have really nice napkins, I'll ask for a spare napkin, and then I'll just put it in my bag and take it home with me. I'm terrible. I'm that person. But the price I'm paying for a meal, I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm quite okay with taking a napkin home. Right, I think I can use this one because it's identical to that one nearly. I mean, it doesn't go all the way to the top, so does that bother me? No, it doesn't bother me actually, because if I do it to the edge of the turquoise instead of the edge of the card, 
that will work because I'm going to put a cluster up there anyway. Right, okay. That decision is made. So, um, I don't trust a, um, washi tape, but I do trust double-sided tape. So I'm just going to do my darndest to get this off here. This is the bit where you may have to go, oh God, is that never going to come off for him? I'm terrible at this bit. And you've been so kind and you guys have gone, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried? I've tried everything. Doesn't work for me. Right. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to overlap slightly. I'm going to line it up with the bottom edge. I'm going to work my way up as I did with the sticking stuff down and just stick it in place. And that way I know I can hold it in place now. and pull this out. So that's now in place, near enough the same as that. I don't think I've got another one of those. Um, I've got this one. Can you see them? It's finding, it's finding one that's complementary. What I try to do is I try to find a cluster that will pull something out of the image or is in with keeping. Now, I used this one because it was a craft coloured card, so I could basically pull in something that is complementary to this colour, like this button here, but I don't like that one, so. I do quite like the darkness of that one on there. I need to make some more of those, I think. Oh wait, this might work. Okay, it's not, not exactly the same, but it will do because, um, it's got similar elements to it. That will go nicely up there. Right, see, so pull off some of these threads. Give it a little bit of a fringed edge. I'm okay with that. Now, again, I'm going to put this down with Fabri-Tac because I kind of have to. It's fabric. So I don't bother with too much on here unless it's got something like this that's going to fray. And then I will run it around the edge a little bit just to sort of seal the fraying in so it doesn't doesn't keep running forever. I ordered more fabri last night, so I'm down to the dregs of my fabri people. Down to the dregs of my fabri -tac. Right, so we just need to find the appropriate labels now. Or labels. Right, I'm not sure I need to match up the numbers perfectly. So let's just see if I can find something that's going to work. That'll be quite cute. Right, and I've, as you can see, it's on a piece of book page and I'm just going to catch the edges of that book page because it adds another piece of interest onto there. Folded paper to glue this down. Now, I could use um, art glitter glue for this, but I'm okay using glue stick. I've just folded that over and put it so that little fringed edge is actually sticking over the side. And I need to find, what word was it? Friends. Now, I know I stamped friends yesterday, so I know there's going to be a friend somewhere in here. And there it is. Now, this again is, actually that's nice with the bits of brown on it, isn't it? Hmm, maybe I need to trim that down slightly. Let's just see whether I can tear this without ruining this. This is a very old piece of book page, this one. So I hope you don't mind me doing this video. I, as I said, basically, I was getting so many questions about them. If someone asks in the comment, how do I do them? I can just refer them to this video, which is, which is a nice way of answering it because when I'm answering a comment, I can't always write three or four sides explanation of it. But if I just put a video link in and they watch the video, then they have the full in-depth explanation, which is exactly what I want them to have. Right, let's just stick this down. So I have this 
about in line with this kneecap. And I did go out all the way to the edge of the card on the other one, but I'm not on this one. Right, now, um, I don't feel like I need to do any fake stitching or a line around this. I think that's finished. So let's take one last look at them. So that's the original. And that's what we've just done. That's the original. And that's what we've just done. Am I shot? Hopefully I'm in shot. That's the original, and that's what we've just done. So hopefully, guys, that will help all of you who've been asking. As I said, I'm not a card maker. For me, these are journal cover fronts. These could be big journal cards. I could cut this into a tag. I mean, they're just things I can make, make this narrow and cut a notch and it's a pocket. It's a technique that I've adapted to making blank cards for myself so that I can always send a card out and say thank you card. I can say a happy mail card. I love doing it. I also love doing um, my arty postcards for the same reasons. And some of those arty postcards could easily become card fronts in themselves. So let's have a reach one right, right off the front of the box. OK, this is it's not finished yet, but this is an arty postcard. But if I put that onto the front of there and put an inscription or something onto it. I could use that on a card front as well. I could equally use this stick it to a journal cover. So it's all about the technique guys. It's not necessarily about what I'm producing but the technique. So that's why I don't call myself a card maker. I'm more referred to myself as a card assembler. So hopefully that was fun. How many so's can I just say in one sentence? So I think it's time we need to go now. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.